Brought to you by businessblueprint.com.au So I wanted to focus today primarily on the kind of direct pillar because this is the one that um, is driven by the telemarketing machine I have. Again, it's a simple process, but it's one that I've broken down into several components. And um, you know, cold calling, just getting on the phone randomly to you know, a, a yellow pages list is not a very sophisticated way of finding business. However, if you start to break down how you approach um, the lists or the people you're phoning and, and the break down the process of how you call them and who calls these people, how you monitor and how you develop a database, the whole thing becomes a lot uh, more sophisticated for you and efficient. So step one each year with our, my direct pillar, and we're just focusing on that in a minute, is that we start to ask questions within the company. These are strategic questions. These are questions about our customer uh, demographics. You know, what's our ideal customer? Are they a lawyer? Are they an accountant? Are they a business of 20 people, 30 people? Are they in the CBD? Are they regional? Are they, um, uh, do they have a certain turnover? What's our ideal customer profile. Um, in my industry, it's an industry of office fit out, so we tend to focus on geography a lot. So if we're working in a high-rise building, we might phone all the tenants in that building. Um, we might phone all the architects or project managers that work in our industry, that sort of thing. So all those clever questions at the start, strategic questions, really direct where you're going to get your information from. Once we've decided what our customer demographics are and the ideal kind of customer profile that we'd like to see come through as business for us, kind of the strategic part of the process is done. We then go about finding leads, and this is really about, not about um, buying lists of leads from companies, so there are a lot of list providers out there, but generally we've found that those list providers uh, provide lists that have been developed over a period of time, they've been copied and pasted, often the intelligence behind them isn't there, and uh, the information's historic. So we've decided, we decided early on that we wanted to develop a, a system where we're developing our own leads. So we take the strategic uh, market information that we've thought about, and we plug it into a research engine. And the research engine is three people, and their, their task solely is to find out the names, numbers, email addresses, uh, and some company details of all these lists of companies that we're going to eventually telephone. Fresh information, not a list that we bought from somewhere that came from somewhere else that came from somewhere else. So that's really the key to get the, kind of the, the lead focus right at the start. So we know we've got clever ideas. We know we've got a list of fresh leads that have been developed from a uh, database that we've owned and that we have intelligence behind. We then go through a process of washing. That's a washing machine, believe it or not. And th those, those leads, uh, well, they're not really leads at this point. It's just a list of companies that we've decided we, we want to approach. They're then called, cold called. Um, so there's a lot of volume calling at that point. So we, um, we have a, uh, three people that actually do that for us. They get on the phone and they're just hammering the phone. Are you moving? Are you refurbishing? Are you, you know, and often they'll get a quick win. They'll get a quick appointment. But then... More often than not, as with all telemarketing, you know, you'll you get a pushback or a client will say, well, yes, thanks for phoning, but we're moving in 12 months' time, or yes, we'd like to talk to you, but it's going to be in six months' time. So if we get that traction, we then enter that into our business database, and it becomes a lead for us. So all of a sudden, we've gone from an intelligent, strategic point of developing the right information to a list of leads that we're happy is accurate to a washed situation where that lead has then been placed into a database for a relationship building process with another different type of person, which is a relationship builder on the phone, and we have three of those. So three different people define each of those roles, and that's really the key to the success of the whole thing. The people that come up with the ideas at the start are often the business leaders, the strategic demography of the customer. The people that um, uh, research the leads are often very intelligent, sort of focused people, accurate people, but often not the best people that are going to get on the phone and cold call for you. Equally, the people then generate uh, the new business appointments and the relationships on the phone are often a different type of person, again, who enjoy those long conversations and build relationships over a long period of time. So honing in on those, the characteristics of those people, you can find all of that in one person, but it's quite rare. Um, so we've focused on making sure the right people are in the right place to generate the right results for us. Once the lead's qualified and we found out that um, we have a requirement and the client wants to talk to us. Um, we haven't booked an appointment with them at this point. Uh, all we've done is generated some interest and we've identified that there's actually a need from the customer. 
this relationship journey begins on the phone, and we then back that up with a lot of PR. So that's where the website comes in, the, uh, the web magnet information that Dale's discussed before the, um, we might do industry press releases. We're capturing the database of customers that we've identified as qualified customers that have a need for us for the future, and we start bombarding them with uh, PR, which is coming from several angles, as well as phone calls regularly. They're getting press releases regularly. They're getting uh, industry uh, white papers from us. So all of a sudden, the marketing engine starts to build up, and the awareness of our company with these people on the phone becomes greater and greater. From that point, we've then got a database that we've got some quick traction from. Hopefully, there's been some quick appointments in the sort of cold calling stage. We've then got a pipeline of opportunities that are being developed, and that pipeline is the top of my sales funnel. So that's where kind of the sales, the database doesn't appear on my sales funnel. It's, there's too much there. The pipeline section of my sales funnel is, is the top of it. And that's where I identify the likely appointments that are going to be booked for each of my businesses over the next usually three or two or three months. So then I can get my sales team focusing on those particular uh, pipeline opportunities and bringing them to the fore in terms of a new business appointment. Hopefully, if we've done our job right and we've We've strategically found the right list of companies. We've cold called them. We've qualified them. We've built a relationship on the, with them on the phone. We've given them PR. We've, we've uh, generated some real sort of credibility about what we're doing on the phone. We still haven't met them at this point. We then book a new business appointment at the appropriate time. Um, that then gets converted into an opportunity, which then hopefully ends up in a deal. Now, the key to this whole process, and it is quite simple, I know, and quite obvious, but that is my world, is that if you start to monitor and sort of uh, st create statistics around this thing, um, magic results start to happen. Now, I'm, I'm not a strong believer that statistics don't drive results, but they do drive activity in companies. And for me, uh, the activity that surrounds this uh, process is the key to the success of it. Brought to you by businessblueprint.com.au.